Hey everybody, this is Ed from Dodging Harm Design, where designs become graphic, and today I'm gonna show you what is inside my cheap ass camera bag. What is in my camera bag? This is actually a question I got in an email, and I was like, oh, you know what? You know, all those other guys, they, they do like what's in my camera bag videos, so I figured, you know, I can do it too, because I got a camera bag and there's stuff inside of it. So that actually meets all the requirements. I don't have a lot of gear, so this isn't gonna be a long video at all, but I am gonna tell you what I have, and I'm gonna tell you why I chose to get the specific lenses and so forth that I did. As much as I wanna say this is gonna be a what's in my cheap ass camera bag 2020, it's really gonna be more like this is my gear because I don't really have too much more. So what is inside my cheap ass camera bag? I think it's best if we start off with the cheap ass camera bag. Currently I use the USA Gear S17 camera and laptop bag. It has multiple storage compartments. You can customize the interior just like any other bag. Side access panel, so you just grab that camera on your run. There is a tripod holder on the other side and if you look at it, it kind of reminds me of the Ghostbusters Proton Pack. I've always wanted one of those. It comes with straps, anchors, and rain covers and all the other stuff you would need in order to make a go at it in the field. I really dig it because I really like this compartment up here where you just put everything. I have batteries for the M50. I have um, this dual charger for the M50 and I actually have one uh, battery inside the M50 at all times. But if I am ever stupid and I don't charge them all at one time, I can charge them all one time by this dual bay that gets connected by USB and uh, this one that uh, just plugs right into the wall. So if you ever just see me at like a Starbucks uh, looking highly annoyed and just playing on my phone with everything plugged in, that's that's me. Uh, that's me not being prepared. So before you go any further, I actually need to address this, the talking head section of the uh, camera here. Uh, this is what I've been using for the last few months and uh, that is the M50. I will get into that later. Um, I have been using the uh, Canon T6. The Canon T6 is a great little DSLR. It's, uh, it feels good. It feels like you've got a solid piece of work on it. It's got the uh, 18 to 55 lens. The widest it goes is 3.5. So it's your standard kit lens. The Canon T6 does not have a flip out screen, nor does it have a microphone port. So what I've had to do with this camera is um, actually when I was using this for the talking head sequences, I literally had to sync everything in post. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. It's not terrible. Um, you actually can get better dedicated sound if you use a separate unit for that, like they do in Hollywood and all that. But the Canon T6, EFS mount, uh, came with the 18-55, and I currently have a 24 mil straight prime lens uh, at a 2.8, so 24 millimeter. Look at how cute this is. Like, it's just so cute, just, it's adorable. And this little pancake lens, I just popped right onto here and it sharpened up my images. Prime lenses just have less moving parts and uh, the glass is a little better than uh, your standard kit lens. And it takes, you know, it takes really good images. Plus this has an aperture that could open up to 2.8. So I've been using that for my talking head sequences to kind of blur out the background a little bit more. And you might notice that the background's a little bit sharper today. That is because again, I'm on my mirrorless right now. So this is my EFS lenses total. Now the Canon M50 came with a 15 to 45 mil, about a 3.5 widest aperture. And that's uh, this little guy right here. And everything is smaller on the M50, plus it's a mirrorless, so it's smaller and lighter. It's why a lot of vloggers love that camera, is why that when I got it, I was like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try doing some vlogging. So that was the fun part for me. I get to play around with this thing that's not very heavy and I can walk around. It's not like, it's not like carrying this son of a bitch around. This is, this is just, it's got some weight to it. I mean, it's still, you know, it's plastic. It's not like, ugh, but it's, it's, it's heftier. It's got more beef to it, especially with the, uh, kit lens on it, but you know, either one of these would have just been uh, a little bit more cumbersome to carry around than the M50. So right now what you're seeing me use is 11 to 22 at a 4.5 widest aperture. And it's uh, it's a it's an amazing little lens. It's very fun. I actually got it for vlogging so I could have somebody else in the shot with me or two people. And then we're not like trying to pile up on top of each other to get focused. So uh, it's a badass camera with a badass lens. Those two pairings are pretty awesome. 
I do have one of my favorite lenses. I've been wanting to get this for a while. It's the uh, Nifty 50 1.8 and it's stabilized. It's plastic, but it's damn near indestructible. It's just, it's just, and look at that element right in there. Just look at how big that is. Can you see that? Can you see that? But this is the lens I use for a lot of B-roll because it has that real cinematic vibe to it. But this is an EF mount, which uh, won't fit on the T6 because that's an EFS mount and it won't fit on the M50 because it's an M mount. They make couplers where you can basically just pop on uh, an adapter to the M50, you can use EF glass on it. I got an autofocus adapter also known as a speed booster uh, for the EF to EOS M mount. So what this is, you see exactly how flat that is, like seriously. So it's uh, there's literally no space between the glass element and your sensor. And that is because what it's doing is it's basically putting a big, it's like putting a magnifying glass just right up on your sensor. And the other side is an EF mount. So you take your EF glass, anything you have, and then you just pop it on there and listen to this is how satisfying this is. Just Mm, it's solid. I know it's on there. So not just being an adapter from the M mount system to the EF system, what this actually also does is it's a speed booster. Now, what I mean by that is it actually can, because of that big piece of glass, that goes right up against the sensor. You have more control to make it wider. Um, it doesn't make it a 50 millimeter. And honestly, since I'm putting it on a crop sensor camera, it's not a 50 millimeter to begin with, but um, I still get beautiful shots. And with these, I can, with these, what the hell? I can bring it all the way down to 1.2. That's super wide. Uh, Canon actually has an L series that goes 1.2. Now I am not comparing this to an L series lens. This is not, this is like a hundred dollar, this is like a hundred and thirty dollar lens, but it can open up to about 1.2. So you get that super blurry, shallow depth of field and uh, the pictures come out super crisp and clear. This is not so much a 50 anymore. This will be like an 80 and then there's a crop of 1.6. So I'll probably do a video on full frame to crop sensors once um, I actually get a full frame. So it's gonna be a while, it's gonna be a while. And I currently have some ND filters. Uh, ND filters basically are sunglasses for your camera. So when I'm using the 50 mil and I, because of the speed booster, I actually have the aperture super wide. Let's say, and I've never really done a video with it at 1.2, but let's just say the aperture is 1.2. So let's say somebody comes up to me and says, hey, I'm about to pop the big question to my, uh, my significant other. If you would please hide in the bushes and take pictures, I would be like, that's awesome. I was probably gonna be there anyway. But it is a super sunny day outside and I got the M50 and I put on the speed booster and I wanna test it out and see exactly how buttery smooth I can get that background. I put it down to 1.2. So now the depth of field is super shallow, except it is open so wide. It's letting so much light in. I gotta make that shutter just just super fast and even then it's too much light and it's still blowing out and all the highlights are just gone what i have to do at that point is pop on an nd filter and then dial it back it just stops some light from coming in and then i can confidently take the photos without having to constantly be like it's called chimping where you're at <laughs> <laughs> Never let them see you chimping. And the other camera I use for fun time lapses or just alternate angles is the uh, GoPro Hero 5. Uh, this little thing is super fun. I can put it almost anywhere and I just play with it on my phone to, you know, make sure everything's lined up and set up right. And then I just push record and let it do its uh, own thing. Let it do its time lapse in the corner. I don't even have to think about it. It's just, just it, it's, it's super user friendly. Um, any, I mean, it's just, I, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. These things are just, get some funky angles out of these and they're so awesome and they're indestructible. You can, Throw them in, drop them in a toilet. Not that I have dropped them in a toilet. Often, I haven't dropped them in a toilet. I actually use an old cell phone uh, for uh, recording audio with uh, this lapel mic. It's a Boya lapel mic. Uh, little fun fact about this one is you don't need a battery with it if it's for a cell phone. However, if you plug it into the camera, you do need to have the powered 
uh, battery switch on. But either way, it is a pretty badass little microphone for less than 20 bucks. This was awesome. I have this super hardcore wallet for memory cards that goes with me. I have these like bongo ties just in case. You never know. So that's basically it. I have the Canon M50 as like my main go-to. I uh, have a T6, which is more of my straight shooter. And I have the GoPro Hero 5, and that's what I use for like alternate angles, time lapses, things of that nature. The gear does not make the photographer and gear does not make the filmmaker. Gear does not make the storyteller. Story is key. You can do a little point and shoot. You can do a little GoPro. You can do it with your cell phone. As long as the story is solid, it doesn't matter really what you do it in. Sure, it would be better and more cinematic and, you know, gear does matter in that respect. But beyond that, the only thing that really matters is what you make with what you have. Well, that is about it for me for today. What I would love for you to do is actually in the comments below, tell me about your gear, man. Let me know what you got. If you have uh, full frames, if you're rocking CMOS sensors, do you have an M50? Do you have, do you have a T6? So don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you haven't already gotten around to that, and be sure to crotch punch that bell so you'll be notified each and every time I have an upload. I will see you in the next one. And until then, be good or good at it. Makes me happy.